Hello, everyone. I'm Arkady Lapiro, CEO and founder of Agora Services. We are fintech based in New York and serving U.S. banks, community bank and credit union to help them revamp the digital journey and bring all the change of bank technology over the core. I'm glad to be and excited to be invited today to present you a hot topic, which is the future of change of bank, basically talking about change of bank. Before that, just a very high level, what is a change of bank? Or there's a different concept, which is neobank. It's a new concept that emerged a few years ago. It started in uh, the Western world. It's new digital players that are bringing banking services to a new digital way, mostly an app, to end users. So what is what is the key difference? So you have two wording. One is neobank, and the other the one is changer bank. So just before the definition, few names that you may have heard: uh, Chime, Revolut, N26, Monzo, um, uh, Newbank, etc. So what are the key difference between all of them? Some of them are neobank and others are changer bank. A neobank, it's an entity which is not a regulated bank, which is um, partnering with a bank to provide services. So that's how, by the way, uh, all of them started mostly. Uh, a changer bank is a financial player, FinTech, which has a bank license. So just to give you like that a key distinction, for example, in the US, the number one chime, they're a neo bank, then they don't have a bank license. Uh, in the UK, Monso has a bank license. N26 in its home country, Germany, has a bank license. In the US, they don't have a bank license. And um, Revolut uh, now just applied for a bank license in the UK. So, why are we talking about the future of Change Our Bank? But before talking about the future, let's talk about the present. So, this is as of today, a very high level about the distribution of digital change of bank around the world. Um, in the US, uh, in Europe, so today it's mostly in the Western world, mostly in Europe and in the US, and it's starting to expand in Asia. Uh, there's some kind of heat back in Australia, but I'm going to, to tell at the end about what's the future, what's the present future. But as you see, uh, there's different kind of model, there's a neo bank, changer bank with a with a partnership, um, leveraging another bank, etc. So, are they growing? This kind of uh, why are they growing? Because they provide a user uh, experience which is easy, uh, onboarding which is simple, and a product that is appealing. It's a free product, easy uh, peer to peer between end users, a free debit card. That's how they started. So this is. A, Focus on um, UK, sla uh, sorry, UK slash Europe about the growth of Monzo, Revolut, Starling, and N26, the four leading one in Europe. And what you can see, it's like um, it's exponential. The growth is really exponential. Um, this is download. That doesn't mean a download is a client, it's a, just a download. But as of today, Revolut, they say they have over 12 million clients. They opened last year in the US uh and 26 uh around five to six million clients they open also like a year and a half in the us um sterling which is uh uh today uh, the one which is expanding the fastest in the uk since the last quarter um uh and they mostly serve uk and now they wanted to expand to ireland and other country in europe but they're mostly uh uk um, and Monzo, which is a UK slash uh, US, they just launched a better version in the US, uh, version in the US. So, as I mentioned, what's typically, how do they start? Uh, they start with a basic product, which is a prepaid card or a debit card, and that's it. And this impacts from day one, their business model. They're making money on the interchange fee. In Europe, it's around 0.2%. In the US, it's 1%. Let's make it gross. Um, and that's it. So when, when you see that, you can compare the business model, the revenue per retail customers, uh, comparing the big bank. It's a huge gap. So to reach, and that's pose a key 
problem. What is the future? So the last three years, they were growing very fast, uh, very aggressive under the marketing. Some of them were spending marketing. Some of them, it was viral. But the business model was very easy. Acquisition of end users, mouth for mouth, and a basic product. And now with COVID, where all the revenues are compressed, uh, they need to find an alternative solution. So this is just a graph by a great co uh, consulting firm in Europe, which his name is Fincog, as you can see. Uh, they put a performance of Changer Bank during COVID. So what happened during COVID? COVID is just a revelation uh, for them. The issue was before COVID, but COVID accelerated it. So what you can see, the one we're making are kind of three categories. Trading, online trading, stock market, uh, lending product, uh, and credit card. And the one we're losing are the one are not winning enough, are the one which is um, mostly on prepaid card and uh, not additional activity. So the big winner during COVID was Robinhood. You all heard about Robinhood. Robinhood right now is looking to launch also in the UK. It's a trading platform. Sterling Bank, the UK bank, um, Challenger Bank, not a neo bank. Um, they exploded literally in the UK. They got boosted by the guaranteed uh, um, credit program uh, by the UK government. In the US, you would call the PPP plan. Uh, in the UK, it was a backed governmental loan and uh, it, it, their balance sheet exploded. So right now, as of today, they announced that starting ban announced that they're profitable. They're making benefit. For how long? It's another question. <clears throat> On the other spectrum, uh, the one we lost, it's uh, Monceau, Revolut. Um, Revolut didn't lose, but it was temporary. Uh, they were hit on uh, the FX because they're mostly an FX player, but they expanded on the crypto trading. Where, so last month, Revolut announced that they were a break even. Um, so what you see here, there's uh, some players like N26, uh, Monese, Monzo, um, which are under the radar. That means they have to move, everybody has to move to add a business model. And this is, once again, from FinCog, uh, another view about what core product they're, they're offering. So what you see, most of them are right now expanding into lending, which is an easy, an easy way. Uh, you need a balance sheet, but it's kind of easy. Uh, credit card, uh, two players uh, um, among the winner. Um, but definitely today, uh, the, the Changer Bank uh, have two options. And uh, that's what we're talking about, uh, about what, what is the future of Changer Bank. So what is the reality today? Reality number one, like I called, truth in banking, truth in fintech. You can be financed by VCs. There was a euphoria about Changer Bank. Uh, down the road, they all need to make profit. To make profit, you need users, you need deposit, you need to lend, and you need to charge. In the coming weeks, you will hear a lot in the media about uh, some challenge, existential challenge, uh, threatening life for Changer Bank. So there was um, a news today, uh, Tandem, um, which is a UK uh, Changer Bank, announced that uh, they have concern about ongoing activity, which is was made by uh, the auditor. The same clause was made by the auditor of Monzo in the last report in uh, March for, 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 the, for the annual exercise that ended in, uh, 20, uh, in January 2020. So right now, what are they doing? They try to monetize their client. How? Different way. Way one, what uh, uh, N26, Revolut, and uh, in a certain way, Monzo, they, they're creating tiers, different kind of profile, different kind of cards with different services with subscription model. That's model number one. Option two, they're trying to expand to lending um, and overdraft. So that's why Revolut applied for a li banking license in the UK. 
option three, and that's what's going to happen, I believe, uh, end of this year, there's going to be a series of M&A where Changer Bank are going to buy other Changer Bank to consolidate position. It's kind of funny history because this is exactly what happened two decades ago. Uh, it was not Changer Bank, it was digital banking. And in the 90s, it was called web banking. Um, I was part of this story. Uh, back in 2000, we launched a, a Changer Bank. Yeah, it was not Changer Bank, it was a digital bank, but today you would call it a Changer Bank, which name is Fortuneo. So we launched it in 2000. Uh, the bank still exists today. Um, after two years, the entire Europe was collapsing and the US also. We consolidate, we launched additional product. Um, we didn't create a paying tier. And after four years, we made it profitable. After eight years, we made over $20 billion asset. And just to put in perspective, Revolut today, 12, 14 million clients, maybe $5 billion deposit. They're losing 100 million a year. Uh, Chime, 14 million uh, end users, client. Um, I, I'm not sure they break even. Um, so just to put in perspective, different time, different story. But the timeline of Changer Bank, it's exactly what happened in the past. And it's exactly what will happen in a decade with the new technology. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm happy to answer any question you may have.